Uh, next up is Celine O'Neill from the Revenue. Celine. Thanks, Richard, and good morning, everyone. Um, the Minister mentioned in her opening remarks that, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty about Brexit and when will it happen and what will the future trade and relationship and all of that look like. From a customs perspective, it's somewhat clearer. The UK have said they're leaving the EU and with that they're going to leave the single market and the customs union. So from a customs perspective, regardless of what the future trade and relationship looks like, from a purely customs perspective, the UK will then be treated as a third country. So when a country is a third country, they're outside of the EU, then customs formalities apply. And what we mean by customs formalities generally is a customs procedure such as lodging declarations, um, possibly payment of customs duties and tariffs, um, and the possibility then of controls at the points of importation all come up. So regardless of the future relationship, these things are going to have to happen. So at the moment you're trading with the UK, um, we know very little about it. You're sending us in your VAT returns every couple of months, and you're maybe doing some statistical returns um, every quarter, depending on the size of your business. But other than that, really, that's all the requirement that's on you for trading with the UK. It's exactly the same as if you were trading with a company in Dublin or Cork or wherever. But from the time that they leave the EU, then suddenly they're a third country and the customs procedures kick in. And that's regardless of any kind of deal. So that's why we're saying that these are really practical things you can do now that we can be fairly certain will certainly arise um, after uh, Brexit. So from an EU perspective, customs is an exclusive competence of the EU, so we can't go off and negotiate our own deal with the UK. Unfortunately, that might, things, it might make things a bit easier, but it's an EU competence. So that means that it's the same rules throughout the EU. Um, it's the Union Customs Code is the legislation, and each member state has to implement it in the same way. So if you were importing something from outside the EU, you'd get the same treatment here in Ireland as you would in France or Germany or wherever it is. Um, so post-Brexit, when will customs apply? And I don't mean <coughs> from a date perspective, it's immediately upon the UK leaving that these things will kick in. But what I mean is, when will you be expected to do customs formalities? So at the moment, if you're selling goods to a, a business in the UK, again, I mentioned you just pay your tax or your VAT on your uh, normal monthly, bi-monthly return or whatever, but now you're going to be treated as an exporter. So there are export formalities, and again, that's a customs declaration. Um, and the reverse of that, if you get your supplies from a supplier in the UK, post-Brexit you'll be known as an importer. Now where on exports there's no customs duties or tariffs, on imports there are. And Jonathan alluded to this already, that generally with customs duties and taxes, they're payable as soon as you import the goods. So we won't release the goods to you until you've paid all of these customs duties and taxes. So I will talk in a minute about uh, what you might do to, to defer that payment. And then the third thing, and this is something that maybe doesn't occur to companies at the moment when they're planning for Brexit, maybe they think, I'm not trading with a company in the UK, I'm fine, I don't need to think about it. But if you're trading with another member state, or if you're trading with another third country, but your goods go through the UK, then you're going to be affected by Brexit. So anything that's moving through the UK post-Brexit will have to go under a third customs procedure called transit. So just to, um, just to be clear that there are the three kind of instances when customs are going to kick in and when you're going to need to be ready. So in each instance it requires a declaration to be made. They have to be made electronically. And as I mentioned on the import side, there could be customs duties and taxes, but that's really what the future relationship will look at. So from a customs perspective when people talk about hard or soft Brexit, really what we mean by hard or soft Brexit from a customs um, point of view is whether or not there'll be tariffs and that will be determined by the future trade and relationship. But even if there is a very favourable future trade and relationship with minimum tariffs, all of these declarations still need to be lodged. So the minimum that you need, and the minister already mentioned this, is your customs registration number. So your economic operators registration and identification number or EORI number. And um, that's a very quick process. Once you have your Ross Digital Cert, you can do it online. It takes about three minutes. You go in, you just tick the box for customs and excise tax head. If you don't have your Ross Digital Cert, and again, we're gonna put the focus back on the accountants, they'll already have this information for you. So just ask them to do it or ask them how to go about it. The next thing you need to decide is who's gonna make your declarations for you. So if you're gonna do that in in-house, if you're a big enough company, you think you can, um, you can manage this yourself. You're going to need software to, that allows you to interact with the revenue systems. 
and you're probably going to need to undergo some sort of customs training course. So maybe have a look at uh, the supports that Enterprise Ireland have as a starting point and then see where you want to go from there. Um, if you're not going to do it yourself, maybe you don't have um, a dedicated resource that you could, could do it or that you can dedicate to doing it or you don't want to buy the software, then you're going to need a customs clearance agent. And again, that's all well and good, but you need to start talking to the customs agent now because there is some uh, capacity constraints at the moment in that sector. Now, obviously, we hope that will ease once um, this demand increases. Hopefully, the market will adjust to, to increase the supply. But you need to start talking to agents now. And even if the agent is going to make a declaration on your behalf, there's certain pieces of information that you're going to have to give them to allow them to file the right information. So again, you're going to need to know who the consigner and the consignee are, their technical customs terms, who's selling the goods and who's buying them. That's the minimum. You're going to need to know what kind of goods they are. So I mentioned, I keep mentioning declarations. These are all made electronically. So the commodity code of the products tells the system what goods are being moved. And there, that's a 10-digit numerical code. We have information on the revenue website about it. Um, there's a tool called Tarek that you can have a look yourself, or Intertrade Ireland have a tariff tool as well that can help you. And the thing about uh, revenue and all of the things we're talking about today, there's further information available on the revenue website, revenue.ie for such Brexit. But for the likes of your tariff and that, if you're having difficulty with it, we have contact details up there, so you can give somebody in revenue a ring to, to get a bit of help with that. Um, the next thing you're going to need to know is your customs valuation and just to mention briefly that the customs valuation is different to the value of the goods. So the customs valuation is the actual cost price of the goods plus then it's the cost of any transport and insurance, so any freight and insurance costs, so where that just slightly differs. And then the last thing, and I forgot to mention this last time, but thankfully Ronan was here to pick up on it, is the origin of your goods. So where are your goods coming from? Because the origin of the goods and the commodity code are what determines what kind of tariffs are payable. So you might think, well, I buy my goods from a supplier in the UK, the origin is UK origin. That is not the case. It's where the goods have actually kept come from originally. So your UK supplier could have purchased those goods, say, from China. And that origin is unlikely to have changed. So it, it's, you just need to bear that in mind. It's been mentioned already, but obviously we're trading with the UK currently as part of the single market. None of these um, tax implications are upfront costs, but post-Brexit they will be. And Jonathan mentioned a fair payment account. So just to give you an example, say if I buy 10 different supplies from a UK supplier at the moment, and they come in 10 different shipments um, spread out across two weeks. Every time one of those shipments arrive, I have to pay my customs duty and my VAT before I can have those goods. Now, the Minister for Finance has announced that if there's a no-deal Brexit, he will uh, post introduce postponed accounting for VAT, which means that you'll account for your VAT in the normal way as you do at the moment in your normal returns. But the customs duty, and if there's excise, if it's excisable products, they still have to be paid up front unless you apply for what Jonathan was talking about, which was a deferred payment account. So that allows you to um, account for all of your shipments during the month um, in one payment on the 15th day of the following month. But you do need to be authorised by revenue to do it, and you do need to have a guarantee in place to cover um, any of that duty and taxes. There are other custom simplifications and authorisations that you might be interested in that also allow you to defer the payment until the 15th day of the following month. But again, you have to apply for all of those things and you have to be authorised. And they can take anywhere from two weeks to two months. So it's about four months still to go to the October deadline. You have time now if you want to apply for those things, but you really need to start looking at them now and decide which ones, if any, are suitable for your business and start um, start the ball rolling. The other thing that we should mention is customs always has two procedures. So if I'm exporting from Ireland into the UK, that's an import from a UK perspective. And just to make you aware that depending on your income terms, you could be the person who's responsible for doing the UK customs formalities as well. So that's another thing you can have a look at at your contracts and your income terms and see who's actually going to be liable for what. Um, supply chain was mentioned already, so you're currently getting a source material from the UK, can you get that from France, Germany, Spain? 
if you can think about whether it makes sense for you to do that or not. And then the other thing that we're saying is think about does it, uh, your logistics of how those goods are going to get to you or how your goods get to your uh, end customer. As I mentioned, if they go through the UK, then they're still going to be subject to customs formalities. And I know this is something that, that won't suit every business, but if a direct route to the market, to the continent, um, is possible for your goods, if it's not time sensitive or whatever, then a direct route might be a better option. Because if you're going directly, if you're avoiding the UK altogether, then it's exactly the same process as you do now. It just You just sell the goods, it goes direct to the continent, and there's no customs formalities. Um, we do we're going to need to talk to your logistics company to see what routes are going, and that might be something you want to start talking to them about, the possibility of an alternative route. If an alternative route doesn't suit you, you need to start even thinking about it down, down into the detail of having these conversations with your logistics company about what kind of goods are in the truck that's carrying your goods, because Customer Revenue Act on behalf of the other agencies who are here in the room as well, we're like the gatekeeper for all of these controls. But a lot of these controls are actually based on the product type. So if it's an agricultural type product, uh, foodstuffs, live animals, animal products, plants, even flowers coming in, let's say from Holland to be sold here uh, in the markets, they're all subject to what are called SPS controls. And they're based on the product rather than the risk. So there's a high chance that if your goods are in a truck with one of those type of products, then the whole truck has to stop while the control takes place. And that would lead to delays for your product, which generally wouldn't have been subject to a control. So have a think about that. Um, I mentioned briefly customs authorizations. Have a look on the website, see if any of them suit you. If they do, pick up the phone. We're happy to help, but we can't help everyone on the 31st of October, so don't leave until then. Um, just briefly then, the last couple of things. Certification and licensing. So if you're moving, say, medicinal products or medicines, they could be subject to uh, certification requirements or if you're moving what we call dual use goods so say um, a dual use good is what it implies it's something that could be used for a legitimate purpose or something not so legit you might have a license requirement and that's where the department of business actually come in so have a think about all these things do you need any of these things because you don't want your goods being stopped for something that you could have prepared in advance and they will be stopped if there's a requirement for these things then they will be identified and they will be stopped and delayed so you don't want that to happen and then the final final thing talk to your trade representative bodies they are really fully engaged they're in talking to revenue all the time we have the customs consultative committee which has um, members from all the big trade representative bodies um, and they're really high up on this so go and talk to them and, and leverage their experience and advice Thank you very much, uh, Celine. Just one of the things that was mentioned is this EORI number. Am I right in saying that that is the absolute bare minimum that a company needs if they're going to send goods to the UK? If they're going to sell something to the UK, they need that, regardless of what kind of Brexit we end up. Absolutely. If you're trading outside of the EU um, at all, which the UK will be post-Brexit, and if any of you are already trading, say, with the US or China or Turkey even, um, then you probably already have this number. And we are putting a lot of focus on it, but I don't want to mislead people. That is the minimum that you need, but it's it's not the only thing you should be leaving here today and doing. It takes three minutes, absolutely go and do it, but think about the rest of the things and don't just register for it and think, okay, I'm covered now. You really need to think about the other things as well. And the other thing, if, if, I, if I had a small business, maybe for example, it's an online business and I only sell occasionally into the UK. A lot of what I sell is in Ireland, sometimes I get a customer from Germany and sometimes I get a customer from the UK. I do need these things and if I don't have them, I presume I'm in trouble with the revenue, right? And there are two types of ways of being in trouble with the revenue. One is you're in trouble with the revenue and the other is your goods won't actually make it to where it is yeah. you're supposed to yeah. be going. And it's that second one I'm glad to say today, rather than revenue being the man, you know, giving out in big order, your goods simply can't move. I mean, we mentioned the declarations, the ORI number has to go on to the declaration. If you don't have it, it can't go on. The declaration will simply be rejected and your goods won't be able to move. Okay, great. Thank you very much. We'll have time for questions uh, in a little while.